I'm going to discuss um, indistinguishable particles in symmetry. So we're going to assume that we have more than one particle, um, and we're going to think about what effect symmetry will have on the wave functions that we use for that system. Just to get you in the way of thinking about this, cast your mind back to two spins, where we're combining two spins, um, and we found there were two solutions, one of which was symmetric, um, and that was the triplet state, and the other one which was anti-symmetric, which was the singlet state. You'll see some very sim similar concepts here. So let's first of all just think about um, a Hamiltonian um, for two particles. Um, all of the examples I'm going to discuss are going to be two particles, but they extend to many particles. So if we've got two particles, then we need to have um, a kinetic energy, so a minus a half del squared for particle one, um, and we need a potential energy, which is going to be minus, let's say, z over r1. I'm imagining this might be a helium atom that we're dealing with here. Uh, we're going to have minus a half uh, del squared two, that's for the second electron, minus z over r2. Um, and then we might, for instance, have an interaction term like 1 over R12. Um, though at the moment we're going to think about non-interacting particles, so I'll just put that in brackets there. Um, we would find that for the individual particles, um, we would have solutions um, where you could, for instance, just take the Hamiltonian for the individual particle, um, and we're going to have something like, a, let's say, phi 1 of R1, um, etc., and that would solve um, the Hamiltonian H1, which is just minus a half del squared 1 minus z over r1. Um, notice that we're working here in atomic units, um, where h bar equals mass of the electron equals c equals 4 pi epsilon naught equals 1, um, and so the units of energy are going to be in heart trees. Now, we assume um, that we're going to write this Hamiltonian, H12, um, and we're going to assume we're going to find a, um, an eigenstate. So let's call that Psi of 1, 2, um, and that's going to equal some energy, um, Psi, make that a capital because it's many body, 1, 2. Um, I'm not going to say anything about that, I'm just going to assume that exists. Now, we have, and we are assuming that we have indistinguishable particles. Um, that is, there is no way to assign um, a label to either one or the other experimentally. So that implies that if we exchange the particles in both the Hamiltonian and the wave functions, we will, re we will regain a system without any change. Um, in which case, we must have h of 2, 1 acting on psi of um, 2, 1 must equal the same energy E psi of 2, 1. Um, if the particles were not indistinguishable, they wouldn't obey this relationship. Now notice um, that the Hamiltonian H, um, as I've written it above, uh, is symmetric in one and the labels 1 and 2. Um, and that means that H12 is the same as H21. So what we can say um, is that H12 acting on psi 21 must equal E acting on psi 2,1. Now, let's think about, um, I'm going to la label this equation equation 1. Let's think about a new operator, which I'm going to define as p hat, um, which exchanges particle labels. exchanges particles. This is not an observable, oper observable operator, um, but it's a perfectly valid operator. So if we had p hat acting on the wave function psi of 1, 2, we would end up with the wave function psi of 2, 1. Let's um, revisit the equation above. Um, that's equation 1. Um, so, so we're going to revisit... Oops, let's just delete that. Oh, I've messed up my eraser. Um, I'm just going to put the revisit over here. So revisit equation 1. And we're going to substitute um, the equation that I've just written up here, um, p of 2, 1, 1, 2 equals psi 2, 1, which I'm going to label equation 2, um, into that equation. So I'm going to say and substitute 2. Um, when we do that, we find the following. We have h of 1, 2 acting on p hat on psi of 1, 2 
is equal to um, e acting on p hat acting on psi of 1 comma 2. <coughs> now if we take um, the initial equation that we wrote um, the h12 acting on psi 1 2 equals e psi 1 2 and act on the left with p hat then we get a p hat h hat of 1 comma 2 psi of 1 comma 2 is equal to e p hat psi of 1 comma 2. Um, and if we subtract these two equations then we find um, that h hat p hat I'll put that in round brackets not square brackets minus p hat h hat acting on psi of 1 comma 2 is equal to 0 which of course implies that the commutator of h hat and p hat is equal to 0. And therefore h hat and p hat share um, eigenvectors. They can be both act on the same set of eigenvectors. Now we need to think about what the eigenvectors of p hat are. Um, we can see from equation 2 above that psi of 1 comma 2 clearly isn't an eigenvector of p hat so we need to do something else. Um, let's just revisit 2 again. Um, let's act with act on equation 2 um, with p hat Um, and when we do that, we find that we have p hat acting on p hat acting on psi of 1, comma 2 is equal to um, p hat acting on psi of 2, comma 1, which of course is actually equal to psi of 1, comma 2. Um, in other words, p squared acting on psi of 1, comma 2 is equal to psi of 1 comma 2. Um, that immediately gives us a clue um, that the eigenvector, eigenvalues sorry, of p are going to be 1 um, because if we've acted twice then we're going to get um, the eigenvector squared. Um, so let's just consider um, what would happen if I acted with p hat on um, one of its eigenstates. I'm going to assume that's its eigenstate and I'm going to get its eigenvalue little p and then I'm going to return to the state psi. Again if I acted twice I would have p hat squared acting on psi is equal to p little p capital P hat capital psi and that's equal to um, little p squared acting on capital psi therefore p is equal to plus or minus 1. Um, so we can see that once we find the eigenstates of this um, operator p hat the exchange operator they're going to have eigenstates of plus or minus 1 um, and I'm going to say right now that actually these are going to correspond um, to symmetric and anti-symmetric states. Just as we had with the singlet and triplet operators. If we um, think in terms of the individual particle eigenstates as we did earlier, um, then we might choose to write psi of 1, 2, um, is equal to let's say phi 1 of r1 phi 2 of r2 um, which implies of course that psi of 2 comma 1 is going to equal phi 1 of r2 phi 2 of r1 we're just swapping the labels on the particles which act on r1 and r2 um, and by looking at that we can immediately see that there are two ways to combine those states um, one of which is symmetric and one of which is anti-symmetric um, so I'm going to write psi s um, is equal to 1 over root 2 um, of psi of 1 comma 2 plus psi of 2 comma 1 um, and psi a for anti-symmetric is going to equal 1 over root 2 uh, psi of 1 comma 2 minus psi of 2 comma 1 and of course once we've done that you can see that um, p hat acting on psi s is equal to minor is equal to plus psi s um, and p hat acting on psi a is equal to minus psi 
A. And so these are the eigenstates of the exchange operator P. Um, because they're made up of these states of the Hamiltonian, Psi 1, 2, um, they are states that are shared by P and by H. Um, I just want to remind you that when we multiply um, eigenstates together, so as we've done here to create um, these trial wave functions, when multiplying states, um, we are actually using a tensor product. Um, and you might like to go back and look at another webcast which talks about combining spins um, to understand a little bit more about that. So what I've covered here um, is the exchange and the, the symmetry properties of indistinguishable particles when we've got more than one particle. Um, so we start by thinking about the Hamiltonian. Um, as we found in quantum mechanics, it's generally simple to write down the Hamiltonian, but more complicated to solve it. Um, we then assume um, some symmetry properties of the wave function and of the system based on the fact that particles are indistinguishable. Um, that allows us to prove that this exchange operator commutes with the Hamiltonian. Um, once we've done that, we thought about applying the exchange operator a couple of times, which of course reverts us back to the system we were originally in, which tells us what the eigenstates must be, what the eigenvalues must be. Um, and from that, we've deduced the eigenstates of the exchange operator, um, which are both symmetric and antisymmetric, and are formed by combining some of the states of the Hamiltonian. Um, 